Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Just got done building this beautiful cedar uh, chest. It's uh, actually a toy box for a, uh, a client's uh, little girl. Um, you're gonna see in the video, I have a sign I engraved here on the uh, CNC machine. Um, you're not gonna see the name. They, they didn't mind me posting the video. They just asked that I would not show her name um, on the channel. So um, of course we're gonna abide by that so i have blacked that out whenever you get to it but in any case it just simply says her name across it um, i've got a little epoxy um, as well um, in some of the letters of her name um, but it's basically just a um just like a little toy box i uh, made it out of cedar uh, it's got walnut trim um, kind of match the uh the top with the sign try, uh, since we went with uh, walnut for that um, got some uh dowels that i used it's really more of an accent um, design than for structural integrity um, but anyway i hope you like it there's there's going to be some things that i left out um, as far as recording i explained that a little bit in those areas in the video um, but anyway i hope you enjoy the video um, i'm going to leave a link to everything in the video that i use um, Maybe some of my favorite uh, tools that I use uh, occasionally. Special shout out to Taylor Toolworks. We're now an affiliate with them. Uh, of course, I am also using their products as well in the video. I'll leave a link to everything in the description and hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut these uh, cedar planks down to uh, pretty close to their um, ending size. Typically leave them a little bit long so I can do some final uh, squaring up after the glue up. After we do this, we're gonna take them over to the jointer. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get me a uh, an edge. Really all I'm concerned with here is just getting a good edge so I can get a, a pretty decent glue up. I'm not really worried about the, the face or anything. I'm gonna do a lot of sanding um, once we get to that. The great thing about having this long six foot bed on this shop box jointer is I can uh, joint some pretty big boards and have plenty of support to do it safely. Alright, we're going to go ahead and get things set up over at the table saw. Um, again, I've done a review on them, but these Jessam stock guides are tremendous as far as keeping your stock against your fence. Um, I don't do very many projects without using them. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in picking some up. Once we get all those cut to width, we're going to go over to the belt sander, the sorry, the drum sander. I'm going to go ahead and run everything through, um, get them a nice uniform uh, thickness. Um, don't really have to take much off of these cedar boards. Um, when you buy them, like I do, they come with one side pretty much already uh, planked down and faced do have to go ahead and do the other side so I just basically stack them up and get them all down to the to the rough same size here Now 
This is honestly probably one of the best tools I ever purchased. It cuts my sanding time probably a little more than in half on a lot of projects. All right, the next thing is every woodworker's favorite part, and that is sanding. So typically, I basically start out with 60 or 80 grit, um, just to knock off the majority of everything. If I see any issues, um, little knot holes or anything like that, I typically will just fill them on this type of project with some CA glue, go and get those sanded down. So that's basically what we're going to do here is uh, kind of go through the grits. With this particular project, I start with 80. I go to 120, 150, and 180 for the final sand. I know a lot of you are familiar with Festool. Um, some of you may not be, but I'm going to tell you it was an amazing purchase switching over to this high-quality sander uh, for me. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in checking one out, but it's definitely worth the money on the sander, if nothing else. We're going to go ahead and uh, get these out of glue. I forgot to film the actual glue up on this, but I'm um, going to go ahead and get them undone. And these are just the smaller panels that I glued up off camera as well. It's going to go on each of the ends. I typically I just run a pencil over them so I can kind of keep up with where I've sanded and uh, make sure I'm trying to sand everything uh, uniform so I don't have any kind of ups and downs on there. There's going to be several things that you will not see me film on here. A lot of that has to do with, um, well, to be honest with you, some of it has to do with me completely forgetting to turn the camera on. But also a lot of it has to do with, I, I work a day job, Monday through Friday, so sometimes when I come in in the evenings, I need to take a just about an hour, maybe less, to come out and do a few things. And trying to get the camera turned on and get everything set up, is just not really feasible uh, for me right now having a full-time day job so i apologize if you're missing out on something if you have any question about anything i did that's not shown uh, drop it in the comments and i'll definitely get back with you and answer you i make it a point to respond to every single comment anybody makes Next, we're going to move on to assembly. I'm going to go ahead and just use uh, pocket holes. It's a perfectly fine joinery for this. The little squares you see me using are actually, even though they're red, they're not uh, woodpecker. <laughs> they're actually a, um, a company um, off of Amazon, and believe it or not, they actually were very square straight out of the box. Um, I think the whole kit... Um, it's just pack of four different ones with the, the bars and the clamps and everything were about 60 or $70. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to try them out. I've been very pleased with them so far. One thing you want to make sure you don't forget is glue. Um, like this guy building this chest here forgot. <laughs> Go ahead and glue your joints when you're using pocket holes as well. Uh, it makes them much stronger. Okay. 
One thing I've tried to get out of the habit of doing is using my impact driver for everything, especially when it comes to pocket holes. Um, yes, you can use it. You just have to be really careful because that thing is designed to drive uh, whatever it is you are on into uh, the material. So if you're not careful, you will actually drive your pocket holes uh, too deep and they'll wind up coming out the other side. Um, so here I've tried to just use a regular drill um, to make sure that happens. Um, yes, I use Ryobi um, or however you actually say it. Um, I've had that platform for years and they've been really good to me. Um, no issues whatsoever. The next thing we're going to do is go over to the table saw and you'll notice um, for safety reasons I did have a tourniquet directly on my table saw where I could get to it fast. I highly encourage you to have several tourniquets around your shop because accidents do happen and you just never know when. Um, these are basically what you might call I guess rails and styles maybe. Um, they're basically trim pieces that I'm going to put on the outside of the box. Um, really mainly for aesthetics but I'm gonna cut uh, cut them down to three and a half inches and two and a half inches respectively uh, basically so we can get the same on each side. I'm gonna sand them down to the same process that I did everything else because they will actually be on the outside of the box. Basically, I'm going from 80 grit to 120 grit to 150 to 180. Uh, it's just the grits that I chose. I'm actually going to be spraying the entire box down with a lacquer at the end of this. Here we're just going to glue everything on. I didn't want to use brad nails for this because I really didn't want to have them showing in the finished product. Uh, so I just got a couple of sacrificial pieces here and glued or clamped them up so I wouldn't make any marks on the outside. If you've ever worked with cedar, uh, you know cedar's very, very soft. So anything you do and put pressure on you're going to end up with uh, marks on it if you're not careful. I'm going to go ahead and square up the bottom part of this. I'm just going to use my track saw. That's the quickest and easiest thing I can uh, use in the shop. I've uh, just got a piece of uh, insulation uh, underneath it. It does really, really well. And I absolutely love this Festool track saw. Um, one of the other favorite tools that I've actually purchased. It's really, really good ripping down sheet goods and doing things like this on something that might be a little too long to run through your table saw or your uh, miter saw. Go ahead and spread some glue out here so we can get this bottom done. 
I'm using my fancy glue spreader here. Yes, I could use the fancy uh, silicone one I've got, but if I did, this would not be so enjoyable. Um, pulling glue off your fingers. Everybody knows that. Good times. After I get the bottom put on, I'm actually going to be doing most of the trim in walnut. I've actually got a sign uh, basically that's going to go on the top. It's actually going to be uh, the little girl's name carved in my CNC in the sign. And again, I will not be showing it uh, just because they've asked that I not show her name project. But they have to let me film it. I decided to go ahead and uh, cut some two by two pieces to go in to reinforce these legs. Not that they're really needed, but hey, I mean, you know, anything that is worth doing is worth overdoing. Gonna go ahead and put some glue on these and throw in a couple of brad nails just to hold them in place. Really, just to help, I guess, structurally a little bit. Again, they're probably not needed, but hey. And this brings us to probably one of my favorite tools that I finally purchased, and that is the Festool Domino. Uh, please don't give me a lot of flack. I know there's other ways to do this. You could do it. Uh, well, I say with biscuits, but I uh, have my opinions on that. But definitely dowels will work too. But I absolutely love this domino. It has worked tremendously um, with other projects that hopefully will be revealed on here um, over the next few months. But this was my first time actually using it on a project. Um, not really necessarily for strength as much as alignment but it did a tremendous job and definitely worth paying the money as far as um, time saved having to do this. When I did this top glue up, I wound up doing it in two separate glue ups. Well, I guess technically three. Um, I did two smaller panels and then in the end glued up the two smaller panels together to make the final top. And I did use the um, dollar note for that. Basically what I did was on the first set, I used the tight section um, on it, which is the very first selection on your dial, the domino. And then on this one, I actually used the loose section. It definitely helped with being able to glue everything up and um, not having to have it absolutely perfect and having a little bit of leeway on it. Here we're just going to start the glue up and go ahead and turn these up, uh, get some glue in the domino holes, uh, get the dominoes um, set in, and then get everything pulled together. Uh, again, super happy with the performance of the domino and being able to align these up. And I did bring out the fancy um, uh, silicone roller there. Once we got all this taken care of, um, this is the, the final glue up for the top panel. This is where I kind of stopped recording a lot of stuff. I had to try to piece together a few things here and there. Also, it's where I was um, uh, doing the sign on top with the girl's name on the CNC, which I also couldn't record. So we jump into our spraying um, once everything's on. You're going to see also uh, one of the things I did is I went in and did a decorative slash, um, I guess strength wise, I put dowels, I did uh, walnut dowels, you'll see on all the corners. 
I also did a walnut block that I'm going to actually end up putting the uh, hardware on for the handles of the side. I did also uh, glue and, and tack in a piece of oak on the top and on the sides uh, where the handles are and also where the um, hinge will actually go just for extra structural stability because of the cedar actually being so soft. Uh, bought this sprayer off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. It's great. Run it at about, uh, about 25, 30 PSI roughly. Uh, works great. Uh, there you can see the hardware after I've installed it. And the following are just a few finished shots that I took uh, with the camera again. I had to uh, black out the name on it and everything. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you've even made it this far, uh, please like and subscribe. It was a lot of fun building this. I think this little girl is going to be super, super happy uh, and excited that uh, she got a toy chest with her name on it. Um, come back and see us again. Don't forget, we're giving away a um, tool at 250 subscribers, the uh, Milwaukee uh, finished sander. Um, it's exciting.